All right, so we are back and we're going to be continuing on with our lab series. So today we are going to be talking about RS, R R A S, and basically what is RS. So as networking gurus, um, sometimes you'll have routers and switches on the network and you program those to actually route packets and stuff across the network. But in case you're working with servers and you don't have a router or switch available, you can potentially, like for VM purposes, what we're building in this lab, you can use a router and configure it, uh, not a router, you can use a server and configure it as a router so you can route packets back and forth across the network and now allow them to talk. So in this series, what we're gonna do, we have our internal network that is already set up. And what we need to do is create um, an RS server so that we can route packets from our internal network through NAT all the way out to our external network to our ISP. So without further ado, let's get started. Let me bring up Hyper-V real quick and we're gonna take a look at it. So RS, you need to have two NIC cards. So you need to just verify if you don't have two NIC cards built, this is where you'll go to your virtual switch manager and you wanna make sure you have them. So I've already done my default switch as you know, if you're following this series, all my internal, all my VMs, virtual machines are running on the internal card right here. Now for the RS purposes, I went ahead and I made an external switch and I call it external vSwitch. So this is gonna be connected to my external network. So that means this is going to be shared with the operating system of the host for VC01 that's up here and then it goes out to the local router that I have that's already connected to my ISP so that we could get to the internet. Okay, so if you did not have um, an external switch connected, this is where you need to build it. You'll go to new up here, and then you just click on external, you create a virtual switch, give it a name, and then you have it there. So this is an important step that you're gonna need before you start um, building out your RS server. So we're gonna go ahead and click um, OK, and let's start up our RS. So you wanna have a server that is already joined to the domain, and we are going to go ahead and configure this. So we will be testing RS on PC03, which is our box with Justin East. I'm gonna log in and do a run a test real quick. So currently, I did a test earlier, Justin is take has an IP address configured by DHCP. So let's do IP config on this box. You can see he's pulling a one on one. And as you can see, anything that starts with one on one or higher, we know that this is my DHCP because in the lab series before, this is how I had it set. Okay. So we know that the DHCP server gave this IP address to this computer. So if we did an IP config slash all, We'll also test to see that this box can also hit the DNS service here locally, which is the DC1. And then once we bring on DC2 later, 12 will be activated. Okay, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to ping Google, which if we ping outside 8.8.8.8, .8 it is pretty much a DNS for the outside network for Google. And right now we see, you see that we're getting timeout so we can't hit it. Okay, so the objective of this video is to make sure once we're done, once we're complete, that we can get to Google and we can fire up a web page without making any changes to your current box, just bringing RAS onto the network. Now you can see this box does not have an IP because we're using DHCP to assign IPs. That was done in our previous videos. Okay, so this is basically the setup that we have for PC03. Now let's go back to our RS back, uh, the box that we're going to build. As long as you have this computer, it needs to be done, joined to the domain. So we'll verify um, real quick, view PC. And uh, you can see that my RS box is actually joined to the local domain that we're running, which is the chief.home.lab. Okay, if you're following along this, your lab presentation, if you're using the same name or whatever you created, just letting you know this is um, a, an important step. And then we wanna make sure that we give 
an IP address to these network cards. So I've already renamed these. So what you want to do, the internal network is connected to the default switch, which is connected to all of the VMs. That is your internal network. All the VMs that are connected to this machine uses that switch. Right, so that means all of those systems will talk internally on that network. Now, the external network, which is this, it is configured by DHCP because it is pulling an IP from the router on the external network, which is connected to the ISP. So I'm not going to set an IP on this, but we want to make sure that the internal network itself, we have an IP that is set. And as you can see, we're using IP address 172.61.1. The gateway itself is 25500 and they would prefer DNS. Now the default gateway is also this IP address because it's resolved it to itself. So that's the reason why we don't need to set one rest here. Okay, we're gonna click okay and we're gonna click close. Actually, so just let me show you real quick. So 172.61.1, well, let's see if we can ping this box from here. And we're gonna do 172.16. Did I hit enter too quick? Uh, no, no, no. All right, let's close that out. And we're going to do ping 16.1.1. So we can hit this box. So it's registered. That means RS is set up as our, our, our gateway out, and this PC can communicate as well to it. Now we need to see if we can hit our DC, which is also perfect we can see that the pc is talking to it but when we try to go to google it cannot communicate as yet to the outside network so let's go back to our rs server make sure you set up your ip for the internal network and then like i said you can set an ip on your external depending on how you have your lan set up but because mine is running gcp i'm just going to keep it for whatever it is right now all right, so once you verify that the NIC cards are working and they're connected properly, we want to go ahead and we're going to go to add roles and features, and we're going to add the roles and features that we need to install RS. So click next, accept the default, verify this. You will see the two IP addresses right here, 192 going out. So it is picking up a dot 18 from the ISP, and then 1.1 is for my internal network. We're going to go ahead and click next. Once we get here, we are going to click on remote access. That is pretty much the server role that we need um, to go forward. And as you can see over here, it will tell you, this is what you're gonna to need to connect for VPN accesses and direct access and all that stuff. So if you read the description, it'll let you know exactly what you need, including NAT capabilities, right? Click next. And you don't need no additional features here. So we're gonna go ahead and click next, and then we're gonna click next. By default, these roles will be shown. We're gonna click on routing, and routing is gonna also include the management tools and the additional features and roles that are needed. We're gonna add, and then you'll see that direct access was also included, so accept it. Click next, you can restart the box if you choose to, and then we're gonna click install. Now this feature shouldn't take a long time to install because it is an easy um, role and feature that is being installed. So it doesn't take a long time. But I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here and then we will resume once it's completed. All right, so we are back. Now if you look at it, it says configuration is required, installation succeeded. So we can go ahead and click on close. Okay, so remember notifications you will always get up here, gray, red, or yellow. This is asking you to open up the, the Get Started Wizard. So you can go ahead and click this, and it's going to open up the get, the get Started Wizard. And you can see it's going to ask you for um, three. It's going to give you three options. You can try to configure it here. But we prefer to do it the diff another way. So I'm not going to click anything here. We're going to go up to tools and we are going to go to remote routing and remote access. Now from here, what I want to do, I want to show you in real time. Let's go ahead on this PC 
itself i want to set up a route to show you that we're going to continuously ping to try to see if we can get out to to um, google so this is going to keep timing out until we can actually fix the routing so that you can see in real time when this is activated how it will look all right so now we have our rs server ready we're going to go ahead and click configure and enable right start the wizard right here it will give you a set of options first one you can click is custom and if you go to next you will see that it will give you the ability if you choose this route you can turn, turn on that and land routing together and you can set it up as a custom configuration for this purposes i want to just go back and do do net and we're going to allow this to do a net translation for you to get out so this is the process this is the way we're going to set this this one up click next you're going to see that it's going to ask you okay which public interface do you want to use to connect to the internet now as i told you earlier this is my external this is going out and it lets you know it's configured by dhcp this is a public facing internet pretty much the interface that's going to connect to the internet the internal is going to stay inside so as you can see it's two separate ip addresses because i'm using 172 on my internal network my 192 network is my external network for for internal um my external network um outside but this is how my isp will use this ip address and then later it will translate it through NAT to a public IP address to get to the, the server um, on the internet. Okay, so we'll click next. It's gonna give you a configuration um, pretty much message letting you know that um, it's going to use the external for it, right? And it tells you to make sure that you ha have external DHCP and DNS2, so these are properly configured. And once that is done, we're gonna go ahead and click finish. Now, I want you to continue to look over there now. As you can see, looking up at the top, if you notice, now I can ping 8.8.8.8 because .8 .8 .8 I'm now getting the response from Google. So that is telling you that the net server translation is now working because you can see, if I go to static routes right here, you can see dedicated, external is going out, nothing is working on the internal right here. But as you can see, packets that are going in and out between this ping right here, you will see that it's already routing packets from one server, from one machine to the next, and, and, and it's interchangeable. So if you re refresh this, look, 286729, right? If you refresh this, you see the packets keeps changing. So now 36346322, check it out again. We're going to keep doing that. Each time we refresh, you can see that my internal network is now forwarding packets out to get to to the network over ipv4 we are not working on ipv6 okay so this is to show you right now that this box on pc03 is now able to connect to the internet because we turned on we turned on routing and um network access translation through our ri server just by configuring the interfaces and making sure that everything is good to go right it's not much to it guys it's really easy to set this up so now let's go over here and we are going to attempt to get to google from our browser and if everything is good to go i'm still on my internal network but you should be able to access google just like that and you can see because NAT is turned on and it's working. I have a fully functional um, web page that is working on my client machine. Really easy to set up. Um, nothing more, not, not much to it. Okay. Just note that when you're going in to set this up, just remember you need the two NIC cards to set it up. And that's really it, guys. Um, really easy video you need to follow along. And um, like I said, if you have any questions, Please go ahead and post it below but this video was just to show you how to set up RAS remote and routing access service on a webinars server 2022 box thank you guys for watching this video and we will catch you next time